Hey Roots fam, the theme for this first week of Advent is Keep Awake, which comes from the Gospel reading for this Sunday. We're going to dive straight into that passage in just a moment, but first let's pray for the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of God, this time of year, the darkness seems to be creeping in on us more and more. Help us to see you at work in the dark, giving us hope. Shine your light of illumination on the scriptures we will hear today, we pray. And may the word of God be like a seed that finds good soil in our collective hearts and minds. May it take up root and bear good fruit, fruit that will last. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. If you have a translation of the Bible or a Bible app, you are welcome to turn in it to Mark chapter 13, or you can follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from the NIV, starting in verse 24. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as it gets twigs, its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you will know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, he will not, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. The word of the Lord. This passage in Mark is sometimes referred to as the little apocalypse. Aren't biblical scholars hilarious? <laughs> what could be more oxy, more of an oxymoron than the little apocalypse? But clearly it's called this because the New Testament has an entire book that's called the apocalypse. And so compared to that book, this passage is little. But even calling it an apocalypse at all requires some clarification. Because when we use that word today, we typically mean the end of the world. But originally, apocalypse meant a revealing or an unveiling. So Jesus here is talking about his unveiling at the end of the age, or what we often refer to as the return of Christ. But we can't just skip past the fact that this passage does seem to be describing some quite earth-shaking changes. And we can't simply ignore that the scripture reading shows up in the lectionary at a time in our world when we are experiencing massive upheaval. This year has nearly completely upended us. Nine months later, not only are we still in the grips of a deadly worldwide pandemic that seems to be just now ramping up into its third wave, but we've also seen a global resurgence of the black freedom struggle for equality and justice that's been met with violent opposition. And on top of all that, we've seen partisan political conflict and division in this country on a scale that we haven't seen since possibly the Civil War. So when the lectionary readings line up, like this one does, with what we're experiencing, I take that as a sign that we need to pay close attention to what it says. Jesus' command for his disciples here in this passage 
when the world seems like it's coming undone, is watch, keep awake, be on guard, be alert. So we want to say, okay, Jesus, but stay awake and alert for what? The answer, God at work in the dark. <laughs> you guys are really lucky that I'm not one of those pastors that likes to preach with props because I would have went out and bought or found somehow some night vision goggles and worn them for this homily. But even if I don't have props, I'm still going to make the analogy. When the world seems dark like it does right now, hope is like night vision goggles. Hope gives us a perspective on the world that we can't see on our own. Hope isn't plucky optimism at all. Hope is rooted in the solid ground of God's faithful character. Jesus isn't telling his disciples to just look on the brighter side of life. No, Jesus is telling them to watch for God at work, the owner of the house. Our hope isn't in the inevitable progress of civilization. No, our hope is in the faithfulness and goodness of the God who raised Jesus from the dead. And when we turn our attention towards the loyal and loving character of the God revealed in Jesus, our perspective on the world gets completely overhauled. Like the Apostle Paul said, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Hope in Christ cuts through the noise and the fog of this world, giving us ears to hear and eyes to see. Hope in Christ is solid ground when the world is quaking. Hope in Christ is an anchor in the midst of a raging sea. These past several months, I've said this to several people privately, but now I'll say it to you all publicly. Had I not had Christ holding me down this year, I don't know how I would have made it this far. It's been an emotionally and physically, mentally and spiritually exhausting and infuriating year. And it's not even over yet. If it weren't for my faith in Jesus and Jesus' faith in me, I don't know how I would have maintained. Hope in Christ has given me the ability to see God at work in these dark days, even when I'm struggling just to get through my own day. When we place our hope in Christ, we become part of a much larger story than the 24-hour news cycle. God is at work at a cosmic scale to bring about the righteous and glorious renewal of all things. Like Psalm 146 says, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. The Lord is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. God remains faithful forever. The Lord upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Hope in Christ gives us the vision to see God's dream for the world, a dream in which God's shalom justice covers the earth like the waters cover the sea a world of wholeness and harmony, a world without lack. Langston Hughes was an African-American poet who was part of that Harlem Renaissance that transformed Dietrich Bonhoeffer into a freedom fighter. Hughes once wrote a poem about dreams that sounds a lot like this shalom to me. He called it, I dream a world. I dream a world where man no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, 
where greed no longer saps the soul nor avarice blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free. Where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl attends the needs of all mankind. Of such I dream my world. When Jesus commands his disciples to watch and stay alert, I believe he's commanding us to cling to hope in Christ with all our might. I believe he's commanding us to trust in the light of God in the midst of the darkest times, which is like another one of Langston Hughes' poems called Dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is like a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is like a barren field frozen with snow. Sisters and brothers, one of the ways I've been seeing God at work in this dark time that's been giving me hope and keeping me going is the way that I've seen you all love and support one another and our neighbors. It reminds me that we are not alone, that God is with us by God's Spirit and through the body of Christ. We can and we will endure this season, not because of the inevitable march of progress or the triumph of science, but because God's kingdom is breaking into this world, beginning with the life, the ministry, the signs, the death, the resurrection, and the spirit sending of the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. The new creation movement that Jesus inaugurated continues through a scrappy bunch of beleaguered yet hopeful misfits who refuse to give up. And we will outlast the last gasps of the evil one and the gates of hell cannot withstand us. Hope in Christ gives us vision to see a new world, the one that's arriving through Christ. Let's pray. God of hope, over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. We hear your dreams and yet we do not open our eyes. We continue to live with the curtains drawn and the covers pulled tight, eyes shut to the realities of the world. Forgive us. Kindle a hope in us that will burn through the darkest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleepy world. With hope we pray. Amen. <laughs>